Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. So today it's just me, myself, and I, because I actually put out a vlog or it was like day in the life of a housewife. I don't remember what I called it, but something like that on my main channel where I showed you guys how I manage our days ish. I mean, it was Doug's birthday. So it was kind of more of like a vlog. Um, but I also talked at the end about how we've been able to scale our business while I'm still like primarily a stay at home mom, um, and how I fit in getting things done. And you guys wanted to know more also on Insta stories. I talked about about hiring like a mother's helper. So I basically just got a lot of moms, obviously from my main accounts, um, asking how I like fit things in throughout a really busy day, most busy days with three kids, five years old and under. So I wanted to just do a dedicated podcast to how I've been able to scale with obviously my husband's help. I'm not doing it by myself. Um, our business to nearly seven figures last year. Um, I only posted on social media for about three months and I was with the kids 24 seven. So we had, um, two different nannies last year, but when I say nannies, it's really like a babysitter. And the only time they ever watched them was when we we had um, them watch them for when Doug and I did our podcast. So like the first round of our podcast, when it was called influence to income, we did it during the day. The babysitter would come over for like three hours. And the last hour I was just like with them. Like, I don't know. I'm not very good at hiring babysitters and like having those strict boundaries. Cause I genuinely want to be with my kids. Like I just, yeah. Anyways. So I want to talk in today's podcast episode about how I literally fit it in because in the vlog, I sort of touched on it. Um, but I didn't go into detail about like how I've been able to do this for like the last five years. Um, I think it's more, I'm going to be honest to do with like mental state because I know there's that cheesy phrase, but it's true. Like everybody has 24 hours in a day and it's just, you know, depends on what you do with it. So you see some people on social media and I like follow lots of obviously influencers and just people that are doing amazing things with their life. And I look at their life and I'm like, they do so much more than me in a day. And I don't beat myself up over it. I just noticed that like you can fit in so many things. It's just like, what is a priority to you, you know? So yeah, we're going to talk about like my mental state and how it used to be versus how it is now, how I look at building like this business with my family, um, in between the little pockets of time that I have, how we've also structured our business in a way that complements like family first, like that mentality and things like that. So Anyways, the first thing I want to go into really quickly, though, is a little bit about my background, my history with time management as a mom. So the last time I really like spent time documenting our life on YouTube when I had when I was doing YouTube full time was in 2019. So it's been a while since I sort of put YouTube on hold. And if you watch me back then, you'll know that I documented too much. Okay, I don't know why I was a hormonal mess with my second child. Really, the transition to one to two was like brutal for me. Transition from zero to one and two to three was like, no, like a piece of cake, but the one to two, I don't know why. Um, and I was like a headless chicken. I felt like I was obviously the breadwinner. So there was that, um, I had to make the YouTube videos. I had to do brand deal contracts, like shooting brand deal contents, pitching brands, all of the things and keeping up, I guess, appearances on social media to feed my family. So that's obviously a big reason why I was a headless chicken as well. And it was the first time really doing that with multiple kids. So I was working a ton. I was working like 30 to 40 hours a week. It wasn't like I was gone like a regular job from eight to five, but I was working well into the night, um, seven days a week, not all the time, but on and off and on and off. And there was no structure. There was no routine. It was like complete opposite to like the last vlog I put out where we do this in the mornings. And like, I plan my day the night before, like I didn't do any of that stuff. I was just fight or flight mode trying to survive. And then eventually, obviously we worked our way out of that business model of being like a influencer. So Anyways, um, the things that I really took away from that experience is, you know, you really make time for the things that you prioritize. So at the time I just like out of the fight or flight mode, for lack of a better term, I prioritized, you know, growing the YouTube business. Like, like, you know, getting these brand deals so I can live at the place that I wanted to live so I can feed my family, which, you know, I don't regret any of that stuff. I've said it a million times. So thankful for that experience because it's led us to where we are now. But basically what I'm trying to say is if you look at your life and if you feel like I don't have time to prioritize my mental health, my physical health, my kids, most of you guys that watch me are moms or parents, you know, my kids like consume all of me and they take everything from me, you know, physically and mentally, like I have nothing left to give. Um, it's probably because of your priorities and it's not all, all the time, like your family priorities, you know, because oftentimes, at least for me, I used to say, I don't have time for 
you know, like quiet time for myself. Like I could never get a moment to myself, but I chose to go to bed super late and wake up with the kids, you know? So if I had flipped that and if I would have said, well, I do have time, I just choose to sleep in like until 7, 15 every day. Um, then I would just take more accountability, you know? So I found that from totally changing my life to now feeling like I'm not perfect. Okay. So I'm not, but feeling like I have more control over my circumstances and not being a victim. You can't take on that like victim mentality you know, where life is just happening to you. You have no control. Um, you have to see the things that come to your life as obviously as cheesy as it is, but as like blessings, you know, in order to make a change for your life. Because if you start to do like a side hustle, obviously this podcast is about, you know, becoming an influencer, but also having multiple different income streams and leveraging social media really as a content creator. So that's what obviously this is about. But if you find that, you know, you're making lots of excuses as to why you can't build this type of business or build something like this. It's probably because you fall prey to the victimhood mentality where, you know, you just can't get ahead for X, Y, and Z. So I guess like some things that I started doing to get me pulled out of that is to analyze like how I spend my time. All right. So I don't know about you guys, but I am like a schedule junkie. Like I, I mean, I feel like I'm a basic mom, like a basic mom that goes to home goods. I pick up like 10 of those different spiral bound notebooks that are like sort of the size of your hand or a little bit bigger. And I was writing schedules for years that just like never came to fruition because I just felt like if I had the right schedule, which in, in essence it is true. Like if you manage your schedule well, then you will have time for everything. That's why, like I said, you see these women on social media, like that is not me at least yet, not on this phase of my life, like getting up at four o'clock AM or five o'clock AM to do an extreme workout before their kids wake up. Like that's the next version of me. I'm working towards that. Haven't got there yet because I co-sleep. So anyways, people do find time to fit things in because of their schedule. But my point to this is I used to write schedules all the time and I just would never like I would never get to them. And I think it's because I had mismanaged priorities and also mismanaged expectations. So this is something that I have learned. If I could tell you guys one thing in this podcast episode that you would take away with, it is my number one tip. And this is, doesn't really, this tip doesn't really tell you like how to manage your time better. Um, if you want to like do anything for yourself, but it's really just like, again, like I said in the beginning, like a mental state. So this tip is, and I wrote it down, do not allow your family to feel the effects of poor self-discipline that you might have. So what that literally means is if you want to do a side hustle or if you want to do anything for yourself and you choose because you just, you choose this for whatever reason, um, cause you have high expectations. So definitely you got to set your expectations, but you choose to do this during your kid's nap time. And maybe your kid is like phasing out of naps or they have like 30 minute naps and you start to like work on your computer and you're getting really in the zone. Your kid wakes up and you know, you get annoyed because your kid woke up and you can't finish like an email or you can't finish doing your YouTube video or whatever you're trying to do. So I was doing that for a long time. So I think that, um, especially when my firstborn was two years old, I would get flustered quite often. Obviously I had to do it. Like I had to do it. I was the breadwinner and I couldn't go anywhere else because the way that we made our money was like with documenting my family and it was weird and I don't recommend it, but anyways, wouldn't change it. But anyways, so that's the way that I had to do things, you know? So if you don't have to do things like that though, if you don't have to choose to work during your kid's nap, if you know, historically your kid always wakes up, then don't make it hard on the family. So that's like my number one tip. So again, like do not allow your family to feel the effects of your poor missed time management or however you want to say it is let's say, you know, you really want to start something to have help your family have financial freedom. Like you want to be an influencer, a content creator, or you want to build something for yourself online. Or even if you don't want to like make money or anything like that, if you just want time for yourself to, I don't know, pursue like your calligraphy hobby or do something like that for yourself. And you think, okay, at night when my kids go to sleep, because most of you guys, obviously this is a podcast. This episode is for moms. Really. When my kids go to sleep, I'm going to work on my calligraphy drawing. I'm going to learn how to hand letter, or I'm going to like plan the video I'm going to film the night before. But at the same time, you know, your husband really values that time. Maybe they're gone all day and they just want to hang out. They want to veg out. You know, you can't get annoyed at your husband because he's not going to give you that time. You have to set expectations with your family or the people that you live with, obviously the people that are the closest to you, um, to get them all on your team, you know? So that's like the biggest tip is nowadays when I know that I have to get things done and I am not perfect, like I cannot even tell stress is enough. I'm not perfect. But nowadays the difference difference in who I am now versus who I was years ago is I don't, I try and not let my kids feel the effects of my business 
or my husband feel that. I mean, that's impossible because he's my business partner, but still like, you know, if I have to do something, I try not to get annoyed or super frustrated. And it's honestly like, I'm never going to be perfect at this, but I've become so much better because I can manage my schedule a lot better. I'm also good, better at setting expectations. So what that, and I'm going to tell you guys at the end of the podcast, what that literally looks like. So I sort of like touched on it in my last vlog on my main channel, um, like how I get things done, but I'm going to tell you like a, a real schedule at the end. So anyways, the other thing about trying to pursue a separate interest other than your family and trying to like squeeze all that in is oftentimes if you don't set boundaries like for yourself on how much work you're going to produce or how much time, whatever, even if it is for like self-care or working out, like how much time you're going to give yourself, you can go overboard because it is tempting to put that first, you know, because we all have a selfish tendency, obviously to put first our own dreams, our own aspirations, especially if you feel like, oh, this is going to be good for the family. Like I got to do this. And sometimes you do have to sacrifice things. Like I totally get it, but you definitely don't want to not be a present parent or a present mom because you're being pulled in different directions. And again, that just comes down with having boundaries for yourself. So literally what that looks like for me is at the beginning of 2022, I had to make a decision because I was going back on social media after taking a crazy hiatus of 2021 of like barely posting and just focusing on my clients and students. Um, you know, I had to decide like, well, what am I going to post? Like how much am I going to post on social media? Like literally. So let's go ahead and talk about this, like the nitty gritty stuff. So I I work with a lot of content creators. Actually, all of them are content creators, obviously. Um, We teach them how to do online courses, how to create sales funnels, how to make like the passive income generating machine. So that's really what we do for a living. And all of them are content creators and they're always asking me like, well, I should post a YouTube video a week or two, a reel every day because that's like the new hot trend, right? A reel every day is what everyone, all the gurus are saying. I should also do a newsletter for my email list. I should also do a podcast. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So you want to do things that you are going to have a good balance with, you know? So like I said, for me, I only committed to one YouTube video on my main channel and one podcast every single week. That is it. Like I know what I'm capable of, like mentally too. I know that I know how to grow and go viral. So when you have that skill and you've done it for so long, it's easy for me. And I did say this in the beginning to Doug, which he obviously is more level headed than me sometimes and reminds me, but I was like, well, I should post reels. I should post YouTube viral YouTube topics for online courses because it'll grow us faster. I know how to do it. I can like bang out a couple videos, but it's really never that simple. You know, you have to prep the night before it involves the whole family. It's like a whole shebang, you know? And so he reminded me of that. And I really gave myself the boundary to only expect and only expect the support from my family, the kids and my husband of the one podcast a week and one main channel video. Like I know I could do reels and posts and stories and all the things I used to do, but you don't have to do those things. You know, you're putting those expectations on yourself. And if you find yourself getting frustrated that you're not producing the content that you see all the gurus posting, or you're like, I don't know, the people that you idolize in your niche or the people that are on top, making the most money or growing the fastest. And if you feel like you're falling short, it's just because of you. Like it's your own mental state. It's your own expectations that you're setting for yourself. Make sure that like the amount of effort that you're putting towards something that you're trying to fit in throughout your day is attainable for you and your lifestyle. So before I get into like my actual schedule of what I do in a day in a typical day and like also in a week, cause not every day is the same. Um, I wanted to talk about the things that I don't do and the things that I do and also the things that I get help with because especially when I used to see people making a lot of money or whatever, it's all relative, right? On social media, when I heard of people making a million dollars, seven figures, which we have not hit seven figures yet. Last year we were close. That is our goal for 2022 because, you know, most people that have businesses have income goals, um, but we haven't hit it yet. But with that being said, when I used to hear people doing that and making those types of goals, I used to think they work 40 hours a week. They've got babysitters on babysitters. And most of them do because of the income stream they've chosen. Um, but with online courses, it is so easy to make a lot of money with a little bit of time. And if you do it right, and if you have the right type of Uh, evergreen sales system, the one that we teach, obviously, then you can make money while you're pushing your kid at the park. And it's amazing. So that's what really how we've been making money for like the last two years, ever since I sort of took a hiatus from focusing on YouTube. But anyway, so I had to ask myself, like, how can I build a business that puts my family first so that I'm not so stressed out when trying to get like a large amount of work done without having to get like a nanny, you know, because most income streams, they require like a nanny, a babysitter, 
here and I just don't want to have to do that. So that's obviously why we focused on courses. Um, but before we get into like the more like literal practical things, like how I actually structure um, my week, because every day is honestly so different in a week. I wanted to talk about the things that I do have help with, the things that I don't have help with. Because like I said, when I used to see people, I thought they had help with everything. So I just thought it would be interesting to get like an insight for you guys um, as to what it takes to run this type of business. And also I'm going to talk about how much Doug works because um, he obviously does work for the business too. So the first thing is, like I said, I don't do it all. Okay. So I mean, I can't clone myself, you know? Um, but right now we do not have a babysitter or a nanny and I don't plan on having one until the baby's a little bit older. Cause I just don't like leaving a one-year-old, um, for very long. It's just like not worth it. Um, so I will have like date nights at least once, once in my life, but it's not right now. So we do have a mother's helper. I actually post this on my Insta stories, I don't know, a couple days ago. And it's funny. My sister was like, what is that? I need that. And a lot of people, like so many people, what's a mother's helper. I did not know what a mother's helper was until funnily enough, I did a sponsorship years ago for an app and a website called care.com. Most people know what it is at the time I didn't. And I did use it when I did the sponsorship and I found a really nice like college girl to watch our kids. But Scarlett was just so clean and so young. And actually the girl, we didn't fire her, but she went off to like grad school. So she kind of quit herself. But yeah, we found like so many credible nannies and this is not an ad for care, but yeah, that's how we actually found our mother's helper. I think that there is like a tab for mother's helper in the care.com app um, and their website. And so I clicked it and I was like, well, what is that? I started learning more about it. It's super simple. It's just someone that gives you an extra pair of hands or extra set of hands, you know, as like a mom. So you can have them do everything. So there are mother's helpers that do babysit and cook and clean. And obviously those are more expensive types of, you know, people to employ, or you can just have a mother's helper that just does literally little things around the house. Um, so like what ours does is literally anything I need her to do minus childcare. So she doesn't watch and she actually brings her four-year-old daughter. She's so sweet. Um, and then her kid plays with my kid. It's amazing. And she's also a mom. I think she's like around my age, but last week she organized our pantry and it was amazing. Um, just to be like uber transparent. Cause I don't think this matters and I'm not outing her salary or whatever. We don't pay her salary, but anyways, she, you guys don't know who she is, but it's 25 an hour and we live in orange County, California. So I know people are like, well, how much does that cost? I always want to know like, well, how much is that? You know, 25 an hour for ours. And all she does is clean and organize. We haven't had her do errands yet. I don't really ever think that I'd have her do errands. Um, cause we usually just Doug can do them for us, but they can also do like returns or like, I don't know, pick up groceries. You know, we have grocery delivery. That's another thing. We use Instacart, which is life changing. If I had to grocery shop with three kids and run this business, no way. So anyways, yeah. So she did the pantry. Um, she organized like under my sink, my cabinets. It is a luxury. It is not a requirement, you know? So we've grown the business all the way up until this last month, almost without a mother's helper or nannies or anything like that. So that's sort of what a mother's helper does. She also starts like something in the instant pot for dinner. Sometimes I just write her a list of what I want her to do. And then if she has questions, she like texts me. Um, she usually comes though when we go to co-op so that things are done like, and she's not just all up in our grill and we're not annoying her too. Cause I have a lot of kids. So we have her come once a week. We also have a maid that used to come once a week, but now they had to cut back cause they, I don't know, they're, they travel a lot from like um, here to Mexico and they come back and forth. So they only come twice a month now, but for the last year they're coming once a week. And that is like super helpful. They do like a deep cleaning. Um, and again, like this is all luxury stuff. And a lot of people think you don't need a maid, but we run like a full on business. Like there's no way I could be deep cleaning things and answering my students, you know, all the time. So we do have that. And we also have one remote employee that really just helps me with content creation. Um, and she used to help me coach old, uh, YouTube printer students, but we haven't launched that program in like a year. So that is what I sort of get help with. And that is pretty much it. Obviously my husband helps as well, but Anyways, so the other things that really help me is, like I said, I have really clear boundaries for myself. So I create content only one day a week, okay? And I try and batch everything. Um, and I hide Instagram on my phone. I've actually toyed with like taking the app off. I've had the app off my phone, like delete it for, I think it's only really been like two weeks. And I had to get it back because... I can't remember. There's always a reason, but my life is social media. That's how, that's our business, you know? So I do hide it though. It's not on my home screen. I put it in like a buried folder. It does help because I put the, 
um, Kindle app. That's where I read like the books that I'm reading lately on the home screen. And I'm more apt to like click that because honestly, with the addiction to the phone that I have and everybody, it's just like mind numbing and mindless. You know, you sit down for a second. Oh, the Instagram app. So I hide it and it does totally help me from clicking it. Um, but I haven't gotten to the, fa- the the place where it's like totally off my phone, at least not yet. But that is my goal. I don't know how I'm going to do that because I have to record stories and stuff. Um, and honestly, doing it on Doug's phone is I've tried. It's so annoying because he doesn't have like the photos I have. Anyways, so yeah, it's not on my homepage. So another thing that I'm trying my hardest to implement, which is like the first time in my life, like I'm going back on social media after a big hiatus and I'm like, oh, I got to go full force. Like that's my natural tendency because that's the only thing I've ever known is to like do everything really well and try and grow on all the platforms. But my new kind of like, I don't know, model for this year is, is I'm only going to create content in the places with the biggest impact. So like the 80, 20 rule says 20% of your effort yields 80% results. So what that looks like for me is where is the 80% of my leads coming from for my courses, my products, the things that I sell, you know, and the places that don't just don't create uh, content on those platforms. And also the second bit of that is like, what's easiest on my family. So yes, maybe posting a reel a day is going to be the easiest way to make money. I honestly don't know because I've not done it yet. Um, but that's just not something I'm willing to do because it means that I sacrifice time with my kids. And yeah, at least in my experience, sometimes for some people, it's like easy to create reels. For me, it's like YouTube is like a bigger impact. So now let's go ahead and talk about a typical day of me balancing with a life balance, you know, or what work life balance is like such a farce, like honestly, but I try my best. So, um, a typical day of me working and being with the kids. So like I said, in my YouTube vlog, which if you haven't seen that and you're listening to the podcast, I'll link the vlog down below. Um, it doesn't show everything, but you can watch it if you want to. Um, it's more entertaining, but basically the night before I plan out everything. So something that I omitted for that video, cause I can't obviously put everything in one YouTube video is I plan everything for Doug. Um, I plan everything for me. So I have obviously the more naturally, I'm more naturally inclined to know what to do with the kids to like help tame tantrums and arguments with them. So what that looks like is like what they're eating for lunch and what activities are they doing? So they're constantly rotating things to do. Um, and there is like obviously free time, like lots of free time for playing too, but I do like to direct them a little bit throughout the day. So I tell Doug like where, you know, if he wants to take them to a park and bring bikes, I give him suggestions and he tells me yes or no, whatever. So we kind of go over the plan, um, for the next day, the night before. I also make sure that I pack their lunches. Um, I clean the house. So this is like on a day where I'm actually creating content. Um, I prep my filming setup. I lay out multiple outfits. Um, and what that literally looks like for the one day week that I batch create content is eight to 10. I film and work. And then I have to put the baby to bed right away at like 10. Cause I co-sleep or I nurse him to sleep. And I'm just like, I don't want to break that right now. So I like it. It's fun. So anyways, I'm trying to cherish the moments and like not be stressed about like training my kid, but that's another subject. Um, so I'm totally okay with it. So 10 to 1030, I lay him down. Um, and then I flip him and I ninja roll away. And then I'm back to work from 1030 to two. I do eat lunch in there. I forgot to put that. I do eat lunch with the family for like 15 minutes. Um, and then I work again from three to four and then I'm done. Like that's all I do for the day that I work. But obviously, like I said in the vlog that you guys probably watched, maybe, um, I do still work on the days that I'm with the kids. I do answer our students during the first nap, lunchtime, and then the second nap of the day. And then at nighttime, I usually work at night. Honestly, though, like at nighttime, it's Doug and I generally like strategizing what we're doing for the business and thinking really hard and long about the decisions we're making or about to make. Um, I find that that's like the most effective use of our time versus just like trying to work and like do everything. So that's sort of like what we do at night. And then Doug works usually four days a week from, well, honestly, it's like three or four days a week from eight to two 30. So that is pretty much it. And we have weekends off. So we don't work as much as it looks like, or as much as you might think is required. I used to think it was required to work like a ton to make almost seven figures, but that is really it. So last week, I think he worked four days from eight to two 30. And what Doug is doing for the business, since obviously he's in the podcast too, he's building funnels. He's making, um, programs. We do have like a super high level version of influencer course accelerator. Um, that's only for people. Like we only work with people one-to-one in that one now, um, which is a new change for 2022, but you have to be making over a certain amount. So he works exclusively with those top tier clients. Um, and yeah, he's creating content for obviously his own brand during that time. So that is sort of like what our life looks like. Um, but my last like final tips for time management or managing your, honestly, your own mental state is don't be a martyr. 
don't be a complainer. And I know that's like me coming at you, but this is based off of my own like serious flaws. Um, it can be hard if it's like your Twitch reaction to uh, complain about something because it's become a habit. I honestly find that like complaining is so, uh, it's like so much more of like a habit than you might think. At least it was for me for like so many years. I still had that tendency to like complain that a baby woke up too early or whatever, but you have to break yourself of that or your life is going to be miserable. At least that's what I'm trying to tell myself. But yeah, that's pretty much all of my, I guess, little tidbits on life as a, you know, online course creator slash full on homeschooling stay at home mom. Um, We've obviously gotten to this place where we don't have to work a lot, but I'm not going to lie. Like initially, like, and this is obviously how our life is now, but a year ago or even two years ago, um, we probably still worked the same amount of hours. I would say anywhere from probably around 30 hours a week is what we work between the both of us though. Um, so it's always been around like 30 hours a week to skill and you don't need to work more to make more money. It's just like, you just have to make better decisions. Um, but honestly, it's more just like managing your mental state. So I know that's like easier said than done, but you have to just give yourself boundaries, set yourself expectations as far as to like, you know, being realistic with what you want to accomplish with your time and then also get your whole family on board. So those are my three tips. Um, let me know if you guys got any value from this podcast. And if you are trying to do something on the side, but you have like, you know, serious issues with managing your time, I would love to help you with that or give you insight or whatever support you. Um, thank you guys for watching or listening. Leave a review on this podcast. If you got something from it, um, like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I will see you in our next one. Bye guys.